One of the things that I think is great about Pete Buttigieg, and this was the case when he was uh, uh, running for for the Democratic nomination in 2020, but in particular, it's been the case as Joe Biden's transportation secretary, is that not only is he really good at facing down adversarial questions, whether it's media or Republicans in hearings, he's exquisitely well prepared. Just it's just a practical thing. He is extraordinarily well prepared. A Republican member of Congress, uh, Eric Burleson, brought up this totally bogus private flights thing to Pete Buttigieg, where it's, there's been criticism from Republicans about, oh, he flew private. And of course, the vast majority of his flights are, are commercial flights. But more importantly, secretaries often fly private and by private, it's government planes. They're not chartering luxury private jets. They're flying on government planes. It's just what it is. Republicans do it. Democrats do it. Pete Buttigieg is so well prepared for this. And by the way, a, a, a bonus points for those who noticed and emailed me about Burleson pronouncing Buttigieg's last name is Buttigieg, which is just like an extra little cherry on top. Listen to this. Secretary Buttigieg, um, since taking Buttigieg, the role, you've traveled quite a bit, um, including private flights. Um, how often do you take private flights? Um, so I assume by private flights, you mean the use of government aircraft assigned to my agency. And uh, I knew this might come up, so I brought some numbers. Uh-oh. Uh, since getting this job, I have taken 600, these are estimates, give or take a couple, uh, but I've taken 638 flights. And, and uh, any of those commercial? Say, say about Any that? of those commercial? Uh, 607 of them were commercial. Ten of them. <laughs> I'm going to back that up just because I stepped over him about to say that 10 were on private. So what is that, like 95 percent, 97 percent? 607 of them were commercial. Ten of them were on military aircraft, such as Air Force One, and 21 of them were on FAA aircraft, representing about 3 percent of the flights. What was the there was a Freedom of Information request made of your office to reveal the costs of the travel. Have you provided those costs uh, again? Remember that this really is a non story. Every transportation secretary has costs to their travel. It's it's he's Burleson is trying to find some smoking gun, but he's just the secretary of transportation. That's all that's going on. He travels around and there are costs associated with I'd have to check back with the office to see how the uh, on the traffic. But I can tell you that, uh, yeah, we're going to complete as I understand with all for months and, and you've not you've not provided the financial numbers for that travel. OK, uh, again, I can check on the status of a FOIA you, request, but I can commit, also. You'll commit to providing that information? Well, we will always comply with FOIA. Um, but I appreciate the chance to discuss this because I can't help get the sense that some people want to make it sound mm -hmm. as if I yeah, don't Mr. travel Secretary, most of the time on commercial aircraft, which, of course, is untrue. Yeah, Mr. Secretary, I think um, I think the irony for most people in my district is that uh, they're being told that they're going to have to convert to electric vehicles to reduce their carbon footprint. And yet not everyone gets to travel the way that you do. Um, and just so, once again, the way I usually travel is in economy class aboard an airliner like everybody else. When we do it differently, it's often because it will save taxpayer I'm gonna, money. I want to get on. So, you know, it, it's one of these total non sequiturs. The fact that it makes sense to move towards electric vehicles because you can centralize rather than distribute the pollution all over the place, eventually move to clean sources for the electricity and on a per mile basis, electric vehicles are more efficient. That's true regardless of how much Pete Buttigieg travels. And these people have nothing. They have nothing. So they're grasping at straws. Here's another just incredible moment from this hearing where uh, Pete Buttigieg, I don't even remember who this was. Pete Buttigieg talks about climate change and some Republican talks about, yeah, like, for example, now we're going from summer into fall. And it's so stupid that you can tell it takes three attempts to explain to Pete Buttigieg what the guy is saying, because it's so dumb. Listen to this. What I can tell you is that climate change is real. We got to do something about it. Yeah, this one's and called been, autumn, sir. So I'm sorry, this one's called autumn right now. So, yeah, uh, I'm sorry. I couldn't make out what you said, sir. This climate change right now is called autumn. Yes. Yeah, that's that's the seasons changing, which mm -hmm. respectively is not the same thing as the climate change. How could there possibly be climate change, Mayor Pete, Secretary Pete, if in August it was hot 
and in September it's warm and in October it's brisk and then in November it's chilly. How is there climate change if that's the case? This is the level on which these people are operating. And so this is why I'm actually working right now on the chapter in my forthcoming book about how do you operate productively in the political system in a world where you can't even get consensus with these people on what the facts are. I'm not saying we agree on the solution, but we could agree on the facts on climate change easily, you would think, without necessarily agreeing on the solutions. We can then debate the solutions. These people don't even understand or refuse to acknowledge the facts. How do you operate in such a world? So that that's this is a perfect example of it. As well prepared as you can be, uh, Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg, and he is good at this, but a really dark reminder of the sad state of thinking and empiricism among the Republican Party. Truly a tragedy, quite frankly. Breaking bad habits can be really tough, but Fume is on a mission to make it a lot easier. Now, let me again remind everybody our sponsor, Fume, is not a vape. I would not be advertising vapes. There's no nicotine. There's nothing electronic. Fume is just a small wooden cylinder that delivers tasty plant flavored air. That that's all it is. OK, first of all, people love the flavor, bunch of flavors, crisp mint, maple pepper, orange, vanilla, raspberry, lemon. OK, there's the physicality of the device. It fits in your pocket. You carry it around. It gives you something to hold up to your mouth. So if you're breaking a bad habit, the hand to mouth piece of it is a big deal. Your hands want something to do. This gives you that. It also has an adjustable airflow dial and a magnetic end cap, which you can just fidget with when it's away in your pocket, which is also useful for some people who are trying to break these habits. Just go and read the reviews online. Fume has transformed bad habits for thousands of people. It's a great alternative for the hand to mouth habit. Go to tryfume.com. Use the code Pacman to save 10% when you get the journey pack, which comes with the device and several flavors to try. The link is down below.